Like if 000. someone was like, "There's seventeen thousand," I bet I bet you round it up. Like you just you just opened that thing and you were like, "I don't know, it's probably about seventeen thousand babies." <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like like no, like, no you, that was yeah. no that was like he, he opened up the thing and, and and it fell. I said he opened up the door and it was like <laughs> when sports equipment falls out of a locker that's too stuffed. <laughs> <laughs> Loud, aggressive, and straight out of the attitude era. Stacker 2 is an OG in the energy supplement game. Stacker 2 chew gummies have more caffeine than other energy gummies while being small in size and price. Can't beat that. Stacker 2 chew gummies and energy shots are designed to give you maximum energy while still tasting Amazing. Stacker 2 B12 10,000% energy shots provide, guess how much, just take a guess. Take a guess what percentage of energy Stacker 2 B12 10,000% energy shots give you. It's 10,000%. They give you 10,000% of your daily recommended value of vitamin B12. Stacker 2 Chew energy gummies are a bite-sized burst of delicious energy that help you take on whatever comes your way. Bite back with the stack. Bite back with a stack and go to Stacker 2 Chew Energy Gummies and go buy Stacker 2 Energy Energy 2. Go and go buy Stacker 2 Energy 2 Gummies and B12 Energy Shots at Dollar General, where you can find all your favorite Stacker 2 products or go to stacker2.com. It's another edition of KFC Radio on the Barstool Sports Network. It's KFC. It's Feidelberg. Uh yeah. And today we got Catherine Blanford on the show at the back end. With uh, a very probably our best interview in a little while and a all time story, like legitimately one of the best stories ever told in this podcast. If it's not, if it's not a machine type story, like it should, she should like close her act every night, like fucking Bert does. Yeah. It should go viral, hundred million views type shit, the way Bert did it. Uh, it's about somebody who, like, if they, I, I'm surprised they haven't caught wind of it yet. And if they did, if they do, I feel like they would interact with it, like a very famous person. And I think. It would be like it would change her career. So uh, she's very funny, great, great appearance, and I think a great viral moment that could come out of it. Uh, we'll get into our voicemails. Uh, make sure you call the voicemail line um, to submit voicemails and submit videos. We're giving out prizes for best voicemail of the week from Pirate Water, uh, and also we are uh, going to wrap up this year. We are going to hit our final um, live shows. So. I know we talked a little bit about how we're not going to tour anymore, and we canceled that that Midwest swing uh, because of Barstool Radio and because of ticket sales. We looked at the, the the final two legs of the 2023 tour. We are going to the first the first leg is Cincinnati, Columbus, and Pittsburgh, and the second one is uh, Minneapolis, uh, ends in Buffalo, and one other place. Um, but basically, we looked at the ticket sales; those are all very strong. Buffalo was like an instant sellout, despite the fact that it's on a on a Sunday. Yeah, we're playing uh, I remember the Jets, so it's gonna be blowout. I remember. I remember when that happened. We didn't really look at the date, and we just had our agent book it. And then we, we were like, "Dude, you booked a show on a football Sunday for a Bills Mafia home game against Aaron Rodgers and the, and the Jets. It's gonna have playoff implications." Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> you know he's been pretty nice about it until right now, and 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 that was but that was the mean that was more mean than anything. Yeah, because <laughs> I remember thinking I was like we can't like the Jets Bills for like the AFC East. It's a four twenty five game. It's like this is going to be in, in late hey, November. This is going to decide the AFC. This is going to decide the AFC. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> well, yeah, because the fucking Dolphins are going to be running away with it. They're going to be in the dumps with us, pal. <laughs> Dude, the Pats are going to be a playoff team. Pats are good. No, they are not. Pats are good. I think you guys don't know what you're talking about because you have not watched any regular football in 20 years. No, Dude, I've watched I've, – I've arguably watched more football this year than I've watched Yeah, but I don't think you know what it looks like. It's bad. It's really bad. Yeah. The Patriots aren't really bad. The, like, what the, makes you say that? I've watched all the games. They, they they can move the ball. They can stop the ball. They can't That's football, the ball. baby. They did. They didn't move the ball against the Jets at all. They the, the, uh, at halftime they should have been up sixteen nothing, well, having give up one first down in the entire half. That's a blowout. They took the foot put, put up their gas a little bit. They whatever. Not to, you don't think they put up the gas when you're uh, down uh, up by one. In score. how they ran the ball, how they, they they ran the offense in the first half or second half, they did. I think, it I, was I think in, they don't have a very good offense. I think I think they're they're pretty good. Okay. I think I think as. 
the year progresses, I think you're going to see Mac Jones. I look, I don't know shit, but I think I think Mac Jones is becoming the guy. Like a like a franchise quarterback. I think Mac Jones is going to be the guy for like the next ten years. I think I think he's showing flashes of what he works with when he's got a real offensive coordinator versus a rocket scientist defensive coordinator. I think Mac Jones looks like the guy. Okay. Meanwhile, Kaepernick is writing letters. Um, J. Cole's posting them. That was like a fucking Mad Libs. What was that? I didn't see you didn't see this? J. Cole posted on his Instagram, Kaepernick's letter to the Jets. Um, Kaepernick wrote Bro, a letter. Bro, I hope this goes on forever. <laughs> Kaepernick? I hope we're in 2035. Dude, and that, like, and Tom Kaepernick's still available. <laughs> I, saw, <laughs> I saw a tweet that was like, the year is 2035. Arch Manning is like, uh, you know, playing for whoever. Jamel Hill says, why is why is Colin Kaepernick not why, playing? Why is, why is Colin Kaepernick's phone not ringing Bro, right now? Bro, I saw a really funny, like a ba- good back and forth. He's played so, football in like eight years, right? So, yeah, well, so, so, so Jamel Hill tweets. So, first of all, the letter read like a... Uh, it read like a college graduate who was writing like a cover letter to get a job. He goes, Joe, I hope this letter finds you well and in great spirits despite the less than ideal start to a big season. I'm wishing you, your staff, and the players a great game this weekend as you look to bounce back. I'm writing, of course, in response to the unfortunate loss of Aaron Rodgers. And he goes on to be like, I think I could be a real good asset to the team, not only in practice. At one point he goes, uh, he goes, if I were to, uh, he's writing for the backup role. So he's like, I want Zach Wilson to succeed. I hope, it's like, yeah, whatever. But then he goes, uh, if I were able to fill this role for the team, I believe it allows for multiple things. Number one, it gives your defense the advantage of getting a truer read on the more mobile, athletic, versatile quarterbacks the team will face in weeks four, five, and six, like Mahomes, Wilson, and Hurts. It's like, you're going to help them prepare for Patrick Mahomes? Yeah. And at one point he says, at the end of the letter, he says something like, uh, I think he says elite QB. Yeah, I'm sure my ability to provide you with an elite quarterback option if QB1 goes down. <laughs> and so so Jamel Hill tweets like uh the Jets just um the Jets just signed Trevor uh Trevor Simeon who checks notes, hasn't played a game, is 31 years old and hasn't play, won a game since 2017, but sure, Colin isn't playing because it's a football decision. And someone said it's definitely a football decision. He hasn't played in years. Watson only missed one full year and is still struggling to get back to normal. And Jamel Hill says, so he's not better than Trevor Simeon? And someone goes, no, he's not. <laughs> I mean, Trevor Simeon, don't get me wrong, Trevor Simeon sucks, and that's not the answer either. And I am at the point where I'm like, I get like, give him a tryout? Like, I don't know, what's the harm in that? He says, he's like, worst case scenario is I try out and you're not impressed. I'm like, that's not the worst case scenario because the worst case scenario is like, it's a media frenzy, yeah, yeah. and it's always the distraction that comes along with it. He's also like, I've been working out every day for six years from 5 to 8 a.m., training like I'm going to get a shot. That I also do believe because I think his goal is just to one day make it back and be like, just close the loop on this. So I do think he's probably in great shape. But, like, training and being in great shape is not playing. Yeah, The, game, the league – has like definitively changed since he played it. You know what I mean? Like he he was kind of the beginning of that, and like he had that one year where he was that dude as like a mobile guy, and then like now everybody can do what he was doing. Dude, that, you know what I mean? It's like not special anymore. And and, and by the way, you want to do this all with the worst offensive line? Like you're also just not gonna, you know, you're gonna suck. I I I'm back in on Kaepernick now. I love that. I actually think it would just be for the sake. I'm a I'm a showman. I like the theatrics and the pageantry. Like the end of the movie, he gets like like fucking Rudy, where it's like he gets like one snap, but yeah. it's like he made it back. I don't know. Dude, I, 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 I want that rather than, or or I want what you just said. Like it just goes on forever. I, I he's fifty to, years old. I used to write that exact letter when the hot cheerleader got dumped by the quarterback. I'm like, <laughs> hello, Samantha. <laughs> Sorry to hear about Aaron. <laughs> if you're the looking crayon. for some, <laughs> looking for someone to fulfill the backup role, <laughs> pros. <laughs> oh, ridiculous. I just got it in my fist. <laughs> <laughs> he, and he wrote at the end references: Jim Harbaugh, John Harbaugh, Chip Kelly, and and Raiders owner Mark Davis. For the last eight years, I have been masturbating feverishly. <laughs> I think I could provide some good stamina. <laughs> Dude, that is that is so funny. I think you wrote a note being like, "Sorry to hear." About- <laughs> I mean, how disingenuous best. is that? By the way, <laughs> to be like, now we're all rooting for Zach. Yeah. It's like, 
Colin yeah. Kaepernick goes to bed every night with the fucking uh, Happy Gilmore or Billy Madison list the next list. to his bed. Like, yep. he's, he's fucking lobbying for turf fields. <laughs> <laughs> you guys going to put grass in? Close the game down. That's what I think. <laughs> Paz, would you, would, you, would you want him if he could play? Even if, if he could play, play. Yeah, yeah, like I, I don't give it. If, if so, by some grace of God he could play professional football, play professional quarterback at, at like at the level necessary, mm-hmm. I wouldn't give a fuck. I would take anybody. But I mean, he's yeah. like, I think he. Someone said he hasn't played since sixteen and only had like one win in twenty fifteen. So mm-hmm. it's been like literally, you know, ten years since he had one. I mean, football he's like game. a Tebow guy. He's like that yeah. one year. Where, like obviously they went to the championship. And then like, like the court, then the league caught up to yeah, him, and it was like exactly. See you later. But uh, it is kind of crazy that, like, I mean, Jamel Hill just rides so hard for him that it's like, people, he's just like, what, you, you don't think he's better than, like, Trevor Simeon? It's like, uh, Dude, I get it. Similar. I did it with Tuka Rask. <laughs> I, got, I got my guy. No, but, but that, you know, it's, it's, it's tough when you're a guy. Tuka, is, Tuka Rask had a Vezina, by the way. Yeah, exactly. It's like, you, you picked the wrong guy. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's where my – I cannot believe I'm – in the season that was supposed to have Aaron Rodgers, we're talking about Colin. We all have busy lives these days and can't afford to waste a day stuck on the couch because of a few drinks the night before. Zbiotics is the answer we've all been listening for, listening looking for. Excuse me, we've been listening for it too. We've been looking for it. We've been we've been we've been feeling for it. Luckily, it's here. I just tried Zbiotics for the first time last weekend, and I can honestly say there is no better way to feel my best the morning after drinking than Zbiotics. Z Alcoholics Pre Alcohol Probiotic is the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. Here's how it works when you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut. In this byproduct, it's this byproduct, not dehydration, that's to blame for your rough next day. Z Biotics produces an enzyme. To break that by- byproduct, byproduct down. It's designed to work with your liver, but in your gut, where you need it the most. It's not dehydration. It is this bad gut stuff. I'm a scientist. Just remember to drink Zbiotics before drinking alcohol. Drink responsibly. And then get a good night's sleep to make sure you feel your best tomorrow. This Halloween, pair your candy and cocktails with Zbiotics to avoid a spooky next morning go to zbiotics.com slash kfc to get 15 percent off your first order when you use kfc at checkout you can also sign up for a subscription using my code kfc so you can stay prepared no matter what the time or occasion zbiotics is backed with a 100 money back guarantee so if you're unsatisfied for any reason they'll refund your money no questions asked remember to head to zbiotics.com slash kfc and use the code kfc at checkout for 15 percent off Thank you, Zbiotics, for sponsoring this episode. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you this. You're still in a better place than me. Not football-wise. Terrible place. But I... Oh, yeah, life-wise? Come on. Life-wise? <laughs> I, I texted you briefly about this, but I did not tell you the full story of what happened to me over the weekend. It's not, again, as bad as what the Jets did. But... So, there's a new movie out on Hulu called Sanctuary. And have you guys seen this at all? Does anyone know what Sanctuary is? I, I have a feeling you and I and maybe just a few other fellows took a little more notice of this movie than most people. Okay. Sanctuary? Yeah. yeah. It stars it's Margaret Quali. Quali. I don't know how to pronounce her name. The girl from uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And uh, Christopher Abbott, who I know from The Sinner. He's the husband in The Sinner. Okay. Um, it's a good movie. It's a very good movie. Uh, it is a... They call it a new take on the rom-com, which I strongly disagree with. It is not a take on rom-com. Uh, to give you the, the, the synopsis of it, um, Margaret Qualley, who I'm going to keep saying her name that way. I don't know if it's right or not. Yeah. But, uh, Margaret Qualley is a dominatrix. Christopher Abbott is the new CEO of a very public company. Or no, a very big company that's about to go public. She is his dominatrix. Um, she... The whole movie, if it feels very play-like. Uh, I think I've recommended The Outfit recently. It's kind of like that. Like The whole movie takes place in a hotel room. It's just the two of them acting their fucking dicks off. Mm-hmm. And it's very good. And um, I popped it on the other night. I knew it was about some crazy, some issues and stuff like that. I was like, I'm going to give it a whack. Some crazy like relationship, sex, power, dynamic yeah. struggle shit. Yeah. The movie starts off, she's being her dominatrix self and i was like hmm. 
It moved. <laughs> I was like, okay. I, was like, I get it now. I was like, I was like, all right. Uh, that's something new about me. <laughs> like, like it was. Bro, we had this but, discussion later with Catherine about about like getting weird. It's like this is how it happens. <laughs> Eventually, you're just like, wait a minute, wait a minute. That felt something. I was like, okay, I've just learned something new about me. This is <laughs> like, like it was. Yep. I mean, like and like, but I got it. I forgave myself for that. Where I was like, look, it's a hot chick being fucking hot. Yeah. And I was like, you're all good, John. Like, fine, whatever. Keep watching the movie. And then it, it transitioned from stuff that, like, is traditionally sexy. Like, not traditionally sexy. It's untraditionally sexy. But at least it's it's fairly common that dominatrix people find that hot. And then it moved on to, like, she's no longer a dominatrix. She's just a crazy person. And, like, it's – there's, uh, again, manipulation, blackmail, uh, rape – uh, she's she's basically like you, like he's like I got this new job and like I'm no longer gonna like hire you as a dominatrix. Yeah, she's like fuck that. Yes. you know we have a thing and and you wouldn't have got that job if I didn't do this with you. So you can't leave me. Yeah, and all violence. That. She holds a knife to his throat. It's all kind of stuff happening. And I don't know if it was because I was a little aroused earlier. <laughs> Did you masturbate to this movie? I didn't masturbate to the movie, but I was like, I was. I thought he was about to say that. I was. If you masturbate to a non-porn movie, you need to be locked in jail. <laughs> no, you need I to did be not. Locked in prison. I think I could. But I think it's arguable what I did was worse. And <laughs> I, 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 I was like, this is fucking hot. And I tell me you called the dominatrix. No, 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 no. I just paused the movie and I like just sat in my own disgust with myself for a while. I was like, what the fuck, John? Like, fucking clean... You're fucking... You're... What the fuck is... Like, Jesus Christ, dude. Like, I'm just sitting in my couch on the, the end of the chase lounge, just like, paused movie on the screen. I'm like, you gotta fucking get it together. Dick half hard. Like, <laughs> this is fucking nuts. Like, you need to figure it out. Like, I got my phone on mirror mode. Like, what the fuck, bro? Like, you and I need to, need to get together. Like, we gotta find... I gotta say page here, dude. This is not good. This is not good. And and I was like, I can't keep I gotta I gotta fucking beat this out of me. Like So I got up oh my God. and I, I started boxing. And have you ever exercised angry horny? It was <laughs> insane. It's the craziest thing I've ever done. Like fucking blood in my penis, fucking in my underpants, in my living room. Just boxing people. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> Bro, to say that you didn't tell me the full story is a gross understatement. The, the, the text was, hey, if you want to relive PTSD, watch this movie. That was it. There was nothing about naked, horny boxing. No, it, was, <laughs> it, was no, it was. There was no blood in my dick boxing text. Just throwing hooks like, get it together, dude. <laughs> this has is, this is gone on too far. This is 23-year-old shit. How is this working for you? It was fucking nuts. It was nuts. I, 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 I'll, I'll, I will uh, play devil's advocate a little bit here. I don't think it is 23-year-old shit. I think it's like 33-year-old shit. Really? I think that... I just missed the normal window? Yeah. I think so. I think <laughs> that's, I think yeah, honestly, I think that's what happened. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's what happened to us. <laughs> just... I, I, think, I think we... I think we, we are uh, we we were basically like sexually assaulted? Yeah. <laughs> I, I think we missed the window. I think we uh, we got into some weird things when we shouldn't have, and now it's too late. And, uh, it and was, we were not ready to handle those things. It was the most because like, I I was like I was like I'm things are going well. I was like I'm gonna handle this movie fine. This is gonna be cool. And I'll I'll be honest. He said you know like you want to really relive PTSD. Watch this. And I didn't know what that meant at first. And I watched the trailer. And I was like, I'm not going to watch this because like I will, it will be PTSD. I, this I, will take me to a bad place. <laughs> and 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 then and I watched the trailer, and so you po posed it as like that, and I'm thinking like I start to get the picture, and I'm like, oh, this is like a, like a sex psych psychological thriller like horror movie. Yeah. And then the words come up on screen, like you said, a new twist on on the rom com and a a sexy take on relationships, and I was like. No, bro. No, this is what we've been campaigning for with the Me Too Two movement. None of this is fun. But None of this is sexy. There's no calm in this. There's nothing even wrong. It's just sickness. It, it, but like, like that is bull. Like that's bullshit. No matter who you are, if you watch that movie, there's no comedy in it. There, there might be a lighthearted line or there two. There was one moment that, that I kind of chuckled at, and again, I think it's because I have a broken brain. 
where she says something and he goes like, why are you like this? You're so crazy. And yeah. I remember being like, yeah, that's relatable. I don't know if it's funny, but I remember being like, yep. Yeah, yep, yep, that yep. was, yeah. Oh, I know. I remember the scene very well. Yeah. It's not funny. <laughs> I've lived this scene a couple of times. Yeah. It was, I, I, I think with my sense of humor, having lived that scene, I would find it funny. Right. Rather than that's someone who saying. hasn't. Right. Like, like and, if, you, if you haven't gone through this, this should be a full-blown horror movie. Yeah. Like, like I, don't get me wrong. I, at no point was I watching this with actual PTSD. Like, I was... I, at times, I was kind of like, Oof, yeah, that's, that's about how you do it. Yeah. And I was like, never in a funny sense. Like, right. it, and like, and I, I, I don't think it, I, for, for, to be very clear, by the way, I'm not like, you just, you just crossed the line. I, no, but it's a, it's a good movie. I, I, yeah, I recommend yeah, yeah. watching it. Um, but like, I wouldn't say it was funny either. I don't, no. I don't think it was attempting to be funny. I, I think it but was. Why those fucking quotes? You saw those, right? I, 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 I know. I never watched the trailer. I just heard it was a pretty good movie, so I watched it. It says um, like, yeah, a new sexy twist on the rom. And I mean, maybe that was their point. Like, it's like it's not a rom com. It's a sexy twist. But yeah, like, that's a misleading. twist on the comedy. Horror. No, it's not. Yeah, yeah, right, right, exactly, exactly. I will say, which I guess some people do say, like some people do go to horrors and laugh and stuff like that. When you've gone through that and you come out the other end, you can laugh at it. And when you haven't gone through it, I think you watch that and you're like, "That's crazy. That doesn't happen." I, I you also, know what I mean, I don't, I don't think there's anybody, I don't think there's any in between of someone who's like, "Holy shit, I got like that scares me." Like, I, you know what I mean? They, yeah. I think they're just like, "That's a crazy story about a dominatrix that like that was just you know acting," and it's like, that happens. <laughs> I, I, uh, <laughs> that definitely happens. I also think like because they're, I think the the goal is to have them both be flawed characters, mm-hmm. and like so like. You know, you can see where she's coming from in some parts. At least, I mean, that's what I imagine any movie, right? You don't. It's not. No, fuck it's not that. fun to I have. Haven't watched it yet. Fuck that. But like, the like, I don't think they do a good job. It's no, like, he just likes to be told to clean the bathroom and right. doesn't want his mom to see that video. Right. <laughs> yeah. And, like, and then like he also like, he's not he also, a bad guy. He's a little weird. Sure. He's a little weird, and he also just wants to stop doing that now. Yeah. He just he's made a life choice to no longer do that. He's he's looking to no longer in, endure this service. That's. I don't think he's a bad guy. <laughs> yeah. No, I, you know what it is? It really, those, 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 uh, why I say it's like a, it, it, it is a 23 year old, 33 year old thing. Like, I don't think you go through that yet. I think when you're 23, you're just like, I don't know. Like, I don't care. Like, see you later. When you're later in life and they're like, I'm going to show this to your mom. <laughs> yeah. or, or, you know, there's threats. Fine, fine. I'll kill her first. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Can't do it. She's dead. Yeah. Uh, but once you, once, you, once you just say like, all right, like post the video. <laughs> tell, tell the mom. Tell the wife. Tell the kids. Like you're just, and it, and then, it, then you can finally move on. But, <laughs> but boy, when you're in it, doesn't it, feel like you can do that. It is very funny watching the, the – uh, ebbs and flows of it where he's just like just do it <laughs> like, yeah yeah I, yeah i whatever man yep. i don't i can't do it i can't yep. whatever gets me out of this conversation <laughs> fine <laughs> yeah well it's it's uh it's truly the like the threat of something happening is worse than yeah yeah and that i really fully believe that in life now and and that's the ultimate one but it's also one where i'm like but do we really want to test this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it probably will end up being true. But also, what if it doesn't? <laughs> yeah. So, Sanctuary, the official movie of KFC Radio. It's it, again. It's a good movie. Like, it's, yeah. it's, I, I think people will enjoy. I it. I legit it's, do not think I will watch that movie. It is truly. It. it I, I didn't have a hard time watching it, aside from dealing with my own. John, what? you ended up <laughs> naked boxing. What not are you naked, talking about? Not, but like that. Like, that was like. That wasn't like seeing. That was. <laughs> That was I, I wasn't that wasn't PTSD. That was like, why the fuck are you still horny? Okay, well, fine, but I <laughs> I didn't have a problem watching it. You ended up violent. <laughs> <laughs> but like, see, like I don't count that as a problem. <laughs> Violence is okay. Violence it's is the, the answer. Stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, the uh, no, like, it, like I wasn't like, oh, no, no. I, I was like, I was like, dude, come on. Like, seriously, dude? <laughs> Fucking seriously? <laughs> I think sometimes about some of my more traditional friends and, like, what would have happened if they went through some of the stuff that, like, guys like us have gone through. <laughs> and I think that they would die. <laughs> I think some of my more, like, just, like, you know, vanilla kind of, like, just, dude, like, like naive like, friends, like, they would just die. Now, I'm like, you got fun again, though. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you don't live. People talk about skydiving. People talk about roller coasters, dude. 
You want to rush. Yo. It's fucking crazy. I, I did. I, I'm talking about it right now like it's crack. I'm like, dude, it is wild. <laughs> you're, you're scaring me, bro. I, I remember. I, Yo, I for you sure. You what phone call. Like, this is about to be the last one ever right now. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> yeah, God. Like some of the details that I I wish I could tell are just <laughs> fucking insane. I I I have I think this is a, a defense mechanism and a spin zone, but with everything, I remember telling myself I was like, when I am on my deathbed, when I'm cashing out, good, bad, or otherwise, I will be able to say that like I live life on every end of the spectrum like i've seen the devil i've gone to the edge i've gone over the edge and back i've been through the fire and back to the fire because there is yeah when you're taking those phone calls you're in those moments you're like oh, the police are gonna come aren't they like what, yeah what, they are because i called them yeah. <laughs> that's what i meant too that's what i meant too like oh no it's too late i dialed they have the gps thing I can't, I can't just tell them no. I can't just say it was okay. Oh, defund the police. <laughs> Don't think so. <laughs> Bro, <that> is... <laughs> uh, fall is in the air. And you know what that means? I know what that means. It means we're looking forward to crisp mornings, falling leaves, and sweater weather. More importantly, it's the perfect time for grilling, tailgating, and cozy comfort food. Omaha Steaks has all your fall cravings covered with 50% off site-wide during their semi-annual sale. That's 55-0% off all your favorite tender, juicy, extra-aged steaks like the Butcher's Cup Filet Mignons. Go to omahasteak.com today and use code KFC at checkout and get an extra $30 off your order. 50, 50% off plus 30 bucks off your order. Minimum purchase may apply. With Omaha Steaks, the possibilities are endless. I give these as gift boxes. They are a hit every time. Endless flavor and endless value on an incredible Entre- on incredible entrees, scrumptious sides, and decadent desserts and more. Every steak and every entree is flash frozen, vacuum sealed, and ready when you want to grill. All of them are 50% off during the semi-annual sale, and every bite is backed by a guaranteed 100% unconditional guarantee. Go to omahasteaks.com and shop all your delicious favorites for half the price. Don't forget to enter code KFC at checkout for an extra $30. Hurry, this sale's for a limited time only. All right. um, Pat's and I are going to Rome. Yeah. Dude, I'm so pumped for this. Uh, I think I I, I just want to put this out into the ether. I... You know, for some reason we've just I've never thought of it as like so, when 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 I before Dave bought bought Barcel back and I was thinking about trying to like grow the comedy side of things, I had a I had a thought that I was gonna tell everybody, like, just be who you are and stop trying to be what you think you need to be. Like Francis, you should just be like the comedy guy. Like that's your thing and like you you're the dark, weird comedy guy. Like be that, do that well, and it'll eventually work. And like if you found something that works, if, if the NASCAR thing works for you, do the NASCAR thing large. Like just, don't worry about finance, like, whatever whatever works, whatever you are, just do it. And I think it's just always been so obvious that you are like the fashion guy. And that should be something you do. You should be going to fucking Rome and flying all over the country, going to all these things all the time. You should have social media accounts about it. You should be. Ugh, you should be no. that guy. The I, I'm I'm uh, I've been doing a little more in that world, and that's just like little like I go to parties or some shit like that, and people have brought the like you should do content. I'm like I'm not because I, I dude I remember years ago like old office I forget the guy's name but Jer- Erica was friends with uh, the guy who worked at GQ and they were like oh we should like have like and this is like back when like huge we, we had like to the moon and it's like it's like we just went to new york like do you want a fucking column in gq where you list your five i was like no i don't want like that's crazy to have me be like these are the five hot items i don't like, think it is that's nuts why is and, that nuts i mean it's i think you would love that it's, and it's i think you're good at it and maybe then it was but i think now you're older and like you you do you have curated your taste a little bit like dude i mean that if that ralph loren the red jumpsuit thing, mood board, like that is such a very real thing. I'm serious. I really think that like you would like it and you'd be good at it. I don't. I don't see why you don't do it. I. 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 I mm. 
I don't. Think, I don't think I'd be good at it. I don't think my heart's in it. I think I just like to. I think this is a uh, making excuses. I pay, maybe. Yeah. Maybe because I think you are very good at it. I mean, every single time. I said it on radio the other day. Anytime I've ever made fun of something you're wearing, like it becomes the trend like six months later. But I'm also late. But like it's but just that, like but that's but that's a role. Like I'm not saying you're gonna be like, you know, I decide what's on uh, you know, the runways in France for next year. But there is a role of like I kinda know what's going on there, but I know I can't dress like that totally. Like here's a way to dress like normal but stylish and and you can start to put some of your own spin on it where it's like I, I do like this one. I don't like that one. Not, not saying you're gonna which one's gonna blow up or whatever. You're just like this is popular. I don't like it. This is popular. I do like it. I think that's a very real role that people would appreciate. Dude, actually, the, funny you're saying this because last night I was in Long Beach, Long Island, and it's probably like midnight. I was outside of Seven Eleven, st- standing waiting for an Uber, eating Sour Patch Kids, and Class- s- some, <laughs> someone someone just walks by me from the back and goes, "Dude, nice jacket." And I went, hey, thanks, man. And he went, oh, shit, Feidelberg? And I was like, yeah. And he goes, bro, they always say your fits suck, but you look awesome. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know who they are, but thank you. <laughs> no, they are a bunch of fucking slobs who don't know fashion. <laughs> it's like, that's the classic. Like, I don't know what that needed to yeah, be Yeah, we, we didn't need to say it that way. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, could have just said, like your jacket. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and honestly, I was, I was waiting with my buddy. And I was like, I'm gonna be honest, man. I wasn't sure about this jacket. Like, I, it was a, a parka I bought last year, and I was like, I didn't know if it was gonna work. Thanks for that. But anyway, the point is that Paz and I are going. Uh, we are invited guests of um, Del Toro and Ralph Lauren. Uh, Which is like the perfect example of like you wear those 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 uh, loafers, and then like the next day, Brad Pitt was like, these are the best loafers. <laughs> <laughs> well, my boy was first. We are going to the Ryder Cup. Paz and I, we you know. Back when Paz and I, we started working together, we're like, we're never going to miss a Ryder Cup. And, <laughs> and, and we're staying true to that. So we're going to the Ryder Cup. Uh, we're going to, like, the hospitality tent because Ralph Lauren and Del Toro uh, designed Team USA's outfits, gear. I don't know exactly what it is. Sorry, this is going to so, be the beginning. Uh, Someone from Ralph Lauren, well, Ralph Lauren is going to be there and be like, that's the mood board guy. <laughs> <laughs> I have not packed yet. We are recording this at 2, 10 p.m. Uh, flights at 10.30. I haven't packed yet, so I don't know. I think to... you should pack the red suit, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> and just be like, look, it's me. No, dude. Like, I I'm the Kool-Aid guy. Bro, I can't wear the red no, suit no, without no, the jacket was... because I do look like the Kool-Aid guy. <laughs> 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 that jacket covers up a pretty fucking <laughs> significant issue in looking good. <laughs> there, I will say there, there is, a, like, other pictures from the trip. <laughs> And I'm like, we don't post those ones. <laughs> there, I think we post them. We yeah, but they're, they're they don't bad. exist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. what the fuck is that? The Kool Aid guy? Is that dude? Is that Elvis at the end of his career? <laughs> Bro, I'm telling you, the the reason I want you to do this so bad is, I've only truly once in my life ever, it was on that trip. You wore the, your thing, and I wore red pants and a red blazer with uh, I think uh, like a black shirt underneath or whatever. Yeah. And we came out, we we got changed, and we we had said ahead of time, we went shopping for these ridiculous things, because we were like, Chinese New Year, It's Bert, uh, Bert said, wear something red, and we were like, should we just wear red t-shirts? Like, no, fuck that, let's go all out, this is like a once in a lifetime trip. And we came out in Bert's suite, dressed like that, and Mark Smalls was like, oh man fucking so jealous like it was a couple like when we first had met and we were like planning what we were gonna do and he kind of kept eyeing us being like "Ah, i fucking wish i did that too like you guys look so dope right now and i'm just like wearing normal clothes and that was the only time i've ever had anybody said that about my outfit (laughs) so i for like one second of my life i was like (laughs) <laughs> this feels awesome. Like I get it now, and you you could get that all the time. We'll see. We'll see. It is. It's gonna. I'm. I'm very. I'm gonna excited. force you to do this. I'm. I'm very excited. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. I uh, think something so simple as like it, it is like a little GQ column of like five things or whatever, which is a little cookie cutter and corner. I would. I would never do that. I don't because I just don't think that I. I. It. it but but it I'm just good be like, at me. Here's what I like. Yeah. That's, that's all I you guess. gotta do. 
I, I'm not. Like, I would not be like, here's what you should wear if you're like 30 something and on a date, or you're like, you live in the city and you're a yuppie and blah blah blah. Just be like, this is what I wear and here's why I like it. I think what you could do is like, like what I would never know is like, I like this outfit because these go with this and that, and like that's where people can pick up some things. Yeah, you know what I mean, like I, you know, I remember when you told me the like, the Larry David thing of like don't match too much. I was mm-hmm. like, I was like, oh, I, sometimes I do try to like match everything and. I'm not gonna do that anymore. Like little, just little things you can pick up that aren't like telling people what to do or where. It's just like, here's what I like. That people don't want to be told. They want to look and be like, hey, what's the fit? You know what I mean? Like, how can I buy this? Like, that looks good. I want to try that. Like, here are the links. Done. I always think that isn't good advice though, because it's just like it's so like I, I I'm not even comfortable doing this, but like it's just for you. Like, it's just what you're comfortable with. It is the only thing no, that. But that's why it works because <laughs> you are genuine about it. You're not like. It's just if if something is trendy and you don't like it, you're not gonna wear it. You mm. know what I mean? Like it's just gotta work for you, which is part of the process of <laughs> that. That's what you convey to people. Like you can have a disclaimer at the top. By the way, these are all just things I like. Wear whatever you fucking whatever works for you. It'll be. We'll see how it goes. I. I it you're is. getting invited to fucking <laughs> Italian fashion shows. You <laughs> dumb dickhead. Run with it, bro. I am. Nervous. I wish I was getting invited to the shit. <laughs> I am nervous about. So we're going to the – we get there. We fly out tonight, get there Thursday at 1, dinner Thursday night, dinner Friday night, and then the event is Saturday. And, Pabs, I don't know if you've looked at the itinerary. The the bus leaves the hotel Saturday morning at 6 a.m. and comes back at 7 p.m. And I'm like, well, what the fuck am I going to do for 13 hours? John yesterday said, when's nap time? <laughs> like, 13 hours is a crazy amount of time. That is a long – yo, because you know what it is? I'm I'm rarely yeah. awake for 13 hours straight. That's just like never, that's... dude. When, when when we hit five o'clock at work, John shuts down. <laughs> like, there have I'm... been times where if the podcast runs till five o'clock, I'm like, we got to wrap it up. I this is only gonna be like a 45 minute episode. John can't keep going. We we like I I told Kevin yesterday. Like I I am almost doing the Newman um, I'm Kramer uh, Isaac Newton thing where it's like I sleep in three hour intervals. Like I I go. Last night because I had to go out to Long Island, it was a little like I didn't get it. But like the night before, I slept from. Like five, to, no, from seven to nine thirty, and then from midnight to two, and then from five to eight. Like, I'm, you ain't gonna do that. I, like, I don't know what I'm. I need a lot of sleep. I don't know. Yeah, you're like kind of like a bear. What if like, what, what if, if you, I just go find and take a nap on the uh, like golf course? Well, I think the I think the other there's only one other option, and that's to stay awake and do the things that. Make you stay awake. <laughs> I think it's much more. I think it's much yeah. more likely. <laughs> put it this way: I think it's much more likely John's going to do cocaine at the Ryder Cup <laughs> than take a nap at the Ryder Cup. <laughs> um, you know, the problem is you guys are going full golf. You're going into the golf world. Yeah, the golf world is very similar similar to the fishing world, where I know guys who like would sleep till noon every day, but the day that they have a fishing outing or a golf uh, golf trip will get up at like 4 a.m. Yeah, yeah. and drive a thousand miles to get to the course to then play three straight rounds and they come back sunburned drunk and tired and they're like and tomorrow we're doing it again <laughs> these guys they don't they, they don't need naps they they probably are on cocaine they, <laughs> they just want to consume golf for fucking 18 straight hours it is uh i'm very excited it's gonna be dope i'm not gonna think about my, the wrong awesome. part of the whole time there i think i really think you should try to make the most of it too and like I just think there's something serendipitous is going to happen as long as you put yourself in the right position, and I think you always do do that. Like I don't think you're just going to be like, let's go to the hotel and sit, you know? Yeah, yeah. And you, so you always do make yourself like put yourself out there, and I think you will. There will be somebody who's like recognizes you or just likes your outfit or has a connection. That that's probably why I haven't packed yet, is because this is like the first time I've ever packed where I feel pressure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. I don't know. You should film this, or like post what you packed. Just when do I, when it I if you don't packing, like it. Huh? Italian style sucks. <laughs> New York City style is way better. Yeah. Baggy shit. Well, that's what I'm trying to. Like, I'm too. I'm trying to blend all the worlds. I'm trying to do like. Well, I mean, remember a little Italian, little I golf. Went, little... I gave all in. I went full Italian. <laughs> <laughs> no, you did though, because you, you, Italian's tight and tight. tight. Yeah, no, yeah, that's yeah, what did I was you do it? No, I went like tight baggy. You know what I mean? Like no. tuck. <laughs> <laughs> so I could like tuck in my shirt, but it's not like suction cupped. You know okay. Because I, mean? I mean, the the you know the big Barstool joke forever was not joke, but just like storyline was Dave went to Italy and came back and he bought like yeah. so clothes like four sizes smaller than he used to wear, yeah. 
and then and then he grew out of them again. <laughs> can't wear, he's like, I have like a ten thousand dollar wardrobe that I can't wear anymore. I put on ten pounds. We are gonna have a weird barstool contingency there too, because I guess Whitney just said yesterday on the on Chicklets he's gonna be there. Uh, but they're all, I think they all get there Sunday, and we leave Sunday morning. So I don't think. I don't think we'll see Whitney. I don't think we'll see Frankie. We might see Dan Rappaport. I actually there's a been. I'd say like a fifteen percent chance though you're like change your flights or something and you're like ah right, we'll stay with the boys. Ah, uh, can't Pat's Cowboys Sunday four. <laughs> I got the guy. <laughs> um, get home. The uh, no, I got. I also got to be back at work Monday. I'm trying to have Portnoy not find out about this. Talking into a microphone would have been a mistake. But <laughs> <laughs> on KFC radio, bro, I can literally scream it. We could just say the the rest of the show. We could just go. John's going to Italy. John's going to Italy. John's going to Italy. John's going to Italy. He would not find out. Uh, I'm paying my own way. I can't. There's. I'm just going to Italy. I got invited to Italy, and I'm going. Yeah. Well, I'm taking a three-day vacation, okay? <laughs> Where I'm not missing anything I do. I was gonna say, <laughs> you're fine. Who cares? <laughs> Celebrity Mint is the first venture of its kind offering the first ever legal tender trading coins. Precious metals coins reimagined as trading cards featuring sports luminaries and influential figures bringing to market unique memorabilia with intrinsic value at a as a bonus. Celebrity Mint fuses sports collectibles with the prestige of coin collecting to bring a new generation of collectors to the table, offering collectors a chance to start a business or bolster their collection with legal tender gold and silver. Celebrity Mint's initial Le Legend series offering will kick off with limited minted coins and memorabilia featuring Jake Paul, Mike Tyson, and Floyd Mayweather, styling and profiling wrestling superstar Ric Flair, and NLB hit leader Pete Rose. Launching October 14th at New York Comic Con exclusively on eBay Live via the eBay app. If you're at New York Comic Con, you'll have a chance to meet the Nature Boy himself, Ric Flair, at the eBay booth on October 14th at 1130 and enter a contest with a chance to win $2,500. Celebrity Mint was founded in 2023 by the Duncan Group from industry-leading U.S. Coins LP, a family business since 1985 and owner of the U.S. Coins and Jewelry. Be one of the first to bid on these exclusive products... <coughs> <laughs> that will shock the collectibles industry. Sign up for exclusive product updates and drops at the celebrity mint doc at celebritymint.com and follow the celebrity mint on IG, Twitter, and Facebook and TikTok to find out how you can be one of the first to bid on these exclusive products that will stock shock the collectibles industry. Follow at the celebrity mint or visit NY Comic Con on October 14th as they launch eBay Live via the eBay app with Nature Boy Ric Flair and a chance to win 2500 bucks. Um all right, so before we get into um, before we get into voicemails, I learned something the other day that blew my brain out of my skull. I I feel like I am a learned man. I, I feel like I've, I've been around long enough, and like you know, will watch Jeopardy enough and read weird things on the internet enough that I know. Or have heard of pretty much all the crazy shit that's like ever happened. You know what I mean? Somebody tells you like a truly crazy story. Be like, oh, I don't know all the facts of that. But like I knew it happened, you know? And for the first time in a long time, I stumbled upon something on the internet that I was like, how do we not talk about this? Oh, yes. Every single day of our lives. Like every single show should start with this. I had to fact check it and I did and it's all real. On May 27th, 1982, uh, these guys opened up a repossessed storage container in Los Angeles. And inside of this repoed storage container was the bodies of 17,000 babies. <laughs> Many of the children were found with missing arms, legs, heads, and internal organs. The medical lab that was responsible was an abortion facility. I do not know how you count to 17,000 dead babies. <laughs> but I thought this was bullshit. I thought this was a internet thing because attached to the tweet is like a, 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 a news report from the 80s. And then I Googled it, and there's a, a, uh, a, a Wikipedia page on it that's like like the dead baby facility. And it said that these guys, 
when you have an abortion facility, and I guess this was like one where it's not just like, you know, early fetus. It was like some fucking, you know, late term shit. They're, it's their job to dispose of. And they like ran out of funds to do the disposal, but like they just they like we we have the money to like store them, but we don't have the money to get rid of them. But we and got seven ninety nine a month though. <laughs> 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 and they somehow counted up, approximated, estimated seventeen thousand dead babies in a storage facility. I gotta say that's gotta be an approximation because otherwise. What a specific number. One. <laughs> Two. But I mean just like three. Like exactly seventeen thousand. Like if someone was like there's seventeen thousand, I'd be like, I'd be you rounded up. Like you just you just opened that thing and you were like, I don't know, it's probably about seventeen thousand babies in there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like like no, like, no that was yeah. no that was like he, he opened up the thing and it, and it fell. I said he opened up the door and it was like when sports equipment falls out of a locker that's too stuffed. <laughs> and he went like, "Holy yeah. shit!" And somebody, somebody grilled him. And was like, "Well, how many were there, Johnson?" And he was like, "I, I, I, I there's like seventeen thousand dead babies." If I had to guess, like seventeen thousand. Like, All right, I'll write it down. Like, I mean, that that's, is because that seems too high. Like, if I if I were just were to guess, if you were like, "How many babies fit in a storage facility?" I'd be like three thousand. Yeah, maximum seventeen thousand. <laughs> it's it's for sure single digit thousands. Uh, so now I also you got to remember this was like a. Uh, it's called the Los Angeles Fetus Disposal Scandal on Wikipedia. It's a, like, um, barge storage unit on the docks. Like, one of those big rectangles. Like, it's not like a pods where you put, yeah, like, yeah, your, yeah. Your, like you Dexter. Know. Yeah, yeah. It's like, this is, like, Only on, one fit uh, in that on one, the docks in, like, a basically, like, defunct junkyard on the docks. There's this huge fucking uh, thing. Um, but... Ronald Reagan talked about it and said it was a national tragedy. It inspired a song by pop singer. Oh, we got to listen to the song. Type in Pat Boone, I don't know, fetus songs. Uh, they were finally buried in 1985. What, did they just do like one big hole? <laughs> What's it called? What's the song called? Why? why, baby, why? It's probably appropriate. Let's listen to the Pat Boone abortion song. 16,000 faces. Okay. That makes yeah. Let's I thought it was gonna be a different word with an F. Fetuses. Oh yeah. No. None of no. these songs start the way I would have guessed. <laughs> no way. This is an '80s synth song. Sixteen thousand faces. Thirty-two thousand eyes. Sixty-four thousand arms and legs. At least a million cries. 16,000 fathers run from a rusty grave. 16,000 mamas hide from the child that she didn't save. In the doctor's hand. I mean, this song is. Crazy. This is a banger. It's, it's it's a crazy song, dude. This is this is what I'm talking about. How did I not know this existed? It that is. not only was it seventeen thousand dead babies, but that somebody made like an '80s synth like club song to like boom 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 boom. That's like that's I mean it's a, it's a pr- apropos song. It's, it's pretty Halloweeny. That's what yeah, it, yeah, is, it, it feels. That's it feels like a um, like Monster Mash song. It feels like, yeah, like Tracy like, Morgan. Like 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 if you're it. at a uh, if you're at like a a school Halloween party where you're touching like the spaghetti brain and stuff. <laughs> there's a song like that playing in the background, like no oh, spooky song, <laughs> spooky song. It I is. mean that is fucking insanity. I thought it was gonna be like you know like M- Melissa Ether- uh, Etheridge type shit. Like, yeah, you know this like. Pour your heart out, ballad. Not a boom, 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 boom. boom. <laughs> like there's, there was some tech music engineer being like, put a little hi hat in there, a little, drop a little bass down a little bit, you know, hit me with that synth. That I, was nuts. I, uh, I take umbrage with a lot of the terminology in it, as a staunch believer in women's rights. 
Um, pro I choice. Don't, <laughs> I don't, pro I don't, choice. I don't. I don't uh, agree with the terms, but the beat hits. So what are you gonna do? I mean, <laughs> that was crazy. When you played the first song and it was like a doo wop song, I was like, that's not yeah. It. yeah. But that good was crazy. The first though. one. It's a good song too. The um, yeah, that's a that's a pretty crazy thing. I feel like probably n- nobody listened to this song, and that guy was like. My 16,000 Dead Baby song yeah. fell on deaf ears. God, where's the guys who promoted Sound of Freedom when I need them? <laughs> so, yeah, listen, it said, it said Weisberg had stored the specimens properly but had not disposed of them due to financial difficulties. Okay, I'm going to be extremely, like, crass here, but, like, just fucking, like, light that shit on fire, no? Like, fucking throw gasoline in the thing and light it on fire. <laughs> Burn those dead babies. Just do what they did at, like, fucking all the chemical companies. Just throw it in the river. <laughs> that, that, too, though. It's like, yeah, just fucking dump this shit. This is so fucked up. It's like, send them send them where Osama bin Laden's body is, I, I, you know? Take a boat out there and just fucking... I do like to think of the, the, the poor guys who opened the container. We're just like, what do you think's in here, Ricky? Like, probably a... Probably like, like some a, dusty furniture, uh, uh, or, or what's the name? Oral, lamp. What's the name? Oral, oral Hershiser. Maybe, maybe we'll find an Oral Hershiser rookie card in right. here. Like, like, yeah, like you're doing some. Jesus art. Christ! <laughs> like, like, Tom, Tom, it's. I know you wanted an old Harley in this big thing. Like, can you can you please do a, a swastika type skit? On that? You guys almost have to. Bro, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> Dude, you almost I'm, have to. I think they oh. wanted a storage war auction. <laughs> opening scene. <laughs> opening scene is just text on the screen. In 1982, 15,000 dead babies were found in a storage unit. Oh. This is that story. And you're walking up there licking your chops. Like, I think we got a good one on our hands. Just starting like, $1,000, $1,500. Did we just pay $1,500 for 17,000 dead babies? <laughs> It's kind of a steal when you think about it. <laughs> Weisberg's Medical Analytical Laboratories received $175,000 with $88,000 coming from pathology tests on aborted fetuses. Of this, half of it, forty four k was paid federally through the United States Department of Health. Uh, what does this mean? Like they got, they got money for this? Because the laboratory was out of business and its owner had declared bankruptcy, there was no assets against which to proceed for civil recovery. I mean, who's really... Okay, now let, let's be very real here. Who's suing? Like, you decided to abort this baby and you're going to get mad about how it was disposed of? <laughs> you already made the choice. <laughs> that, 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 that thing is out of your hands now. That, that guy basically bought that... Feed us off of you. I, I like that. No, I like that. <laughs> you mean you didn't bar- give it a you proper burial? You told me you were going to – you chopped his arms off? What? <laughs> Dude, um, I am also – I'm glad you texted this to me because um, we got to talk about your For You page. <laughs> yeah. Because whoever yeah. – I, I went to this guy's timeline afterwards, and he's like, do you know Bill Gates and McDonald's have teamed up to make chicken nuggets? It, is, like, it is this guy, yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> I was like, oh, it's like, what's Kevin getting fat? <laughs> Dude, that's I, that's why I started – this is the problem. I started my burner account because my For You page was just constantly right-wing nut shit. And I was like, I don't like this. But then Mine is too. Mine is too. But yeah, yeah. but that's where I'm Why like, do you guys use your For You page? Uh, yeah, I, well, that's I, 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 I forget a lot of times. Tweets. I also like, just I just open it up and it defaults to that, and I, I don't mine. Like, mine I, sticks on. I must. I, I didn't change anything, but mine. I just I swipe. I swipe to the right once, wait, and it mine just. Mine also is too on Twitter. It stays on your page or for you. No, on for you, it's right wing stuff. That's why so, yeah, I'm I like I, I really do Twitter believe that Twitter. like when people are like there is an agenda or whatever, it's like I do not get one single liberal tweet, and I think I I, I lean that way. I would say so. And it's always maybe maybe that's the point because I am always like this fucking guy yeah. that makes me want to engage. <laughs> so maybe that is the point. But more often than not, I get like I and then I mute them, and then they're back. So I'm like this. There really is something going on there. The, and that, so I and that was uh, so I started my burner and I tried like very hard to not look at anything. But then when I came back to Twitter, like this is back to my original like. You know, my original Twitter, which I I don't know, man. Maybe they just looked at my behavior and was like, this is what this guy wants. But I'm like, I hate this. <laughs> I think I think you texted it to me at, I would guess, like 1130 midnight. I was definitely in bed. And I, I looked at that guy's timeline. 
and I was like, it felt like like almost like when your grandfather starts saying stuff. And you're yeah. Like, you're like, All right, we gotta get Fox News off a little bit. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. Kevin, Kevin's sending me at midnight. He's like, do you remember these aborted babies in 1980? <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> well, and then let's just to be fair, to play out, you know, for the sake of transparency here. I said that's bigger than 9/11. John said that's five 9/11s. <laughs> <laughs> and we forgot. Yeah, and we did. <laughs> we forgot about every single one of those except for Pat Boone. <laughs> by the by, by the by, while we're just casually mentioning 9/11, we were hit with a extremely fun fact yep. on Barstool Radio. 9/11 related, just like the uh, the initial one was how uh, Fifty Shades of Grey was created because 9/11, because 9/11 created the My Chemical Romance. My Chemical Romance created fan fiction for Twilight, and then that became Fifty Shades of Grey. So, kinky sex, if you're getting your ass eaten, it's probably because of (laughs) 9-11. We also found out that after 9-11 happened, uh, everything was shut down, including sports, and that that week, the Pats were supposed to play the Jets, Mm -hmm. and they pushed that game a week. And then after that push, you know, totally just new set of circumstances, Mm -hmm. uh, starting quarterback for the New England Patriots gets injured and a little Mo Lewis action and a little known backup quarterback took over named Tom Brady. And so 9-11 basically handed the Patriots all their Super Bowls. <laughs> so, you know, congratulations. You you guys pedal in terrorism and you basically support Al-Qaeda and the death of 3,000 innocent Americans every time you celebrate those Super Bowls. Dude, between... BDSM and Brady, Bin Laden's the homie. <laughs> 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 and we're gonna have the nerve to complain to sales. <laughs> Why isn't this sold? Did you say Bin Laden is the homie? But yeah, it's context. It's context. not a context. Context not- matters. <laughs> Intent. No, we were talking about fucking Mo Lewis and Tom Brady. It's, a, it's not a context. <laughs> Insane. Let's go to voicemails. Thanks, Osama. <laughs> What's his name? Papoon? No, this guy. Glenn. Glenn. Oh, Glenn. Glenn's back. He's got subtitles, too. Oh. Um, here's what you guys thought. Whoa, that was a crazy night leg. Holy hell. <laughs> Wait, what? What did he say? Yeah. Start it over. Um, here's what you guys got. Whoa, that was a crazy high leg. Holy hell. Um, anyways, so the Harry Potter audiobooks, right? Uh, if you're listening to them, you're probably either listening to Stephen Fry or Jim Dale, okay? Those are our two mainstream narrators. Uh, Stephen Fry, Stephen Fry, that made you do nasty, terrible, saw-level things to me, and I would still be indebted to him for what he did on those tracks. Jim Dale, on the other hand, is a waste of space on this planet. Uh, that's how I feel. You get the picture. Uh, it's a drama I've been banging heavy for a minute. It's probably my number one take. Uh, I'm scrolling through TikToks the other day, and what do I see? Actually, can we make sure that Jackie's sitting down for this? Um, what do I see but some Barbie promo, right? We have Margot Robbie and we have Ryan Gosling doing an interview. Margot Robbie gets asked, what's your favorite Guilty Pleasure franchise? Wouldn't you know it, she says Harry Potter and specifically the audiobook. She's going on and on about how she loves them. And the interviewer, this dumb bitch, she says, she tries to relate. She goes, oh yeah, Jim Dale? And Margot Robbie goes, no, actually, I'm a fan of Stephen Fry. Uh, so I immediately <laughs> closed that TikTok, called everybody I knew and their mom, and I said, fucking bitch, I was right. You are like, oh, red tete, yeah, Stephen Fry's great. You don't have to say all those things about Jim Dale. You're not even allowed to say that word anymore, red tete. Who cares, man? I was right. I had an opinion that Margot Robbie agreed with, and then it became a fact as a result. Um, so I guess my question is, has that ever happened to you? Slash, if it hasn't, what's a take that you have right now? Uh, and what's the person that you would need to agree with it where you're just like, it's wraps, man, it's over. Um, thanks. Glenn's the fucking Glenn's best. The best. Glenn, whoa. <laughs> Glenn is the best for knowing that, like, let's speed this up. Let's yeah. keep it under a minute. Yeah, that would have been, like, three minutes voice long. Goes, I've said it. And then yeah. He sped it up, and he did some And he did the subtitles. Glenn's, By the Glenn's way, I, I, got a, I got a guy who who's read a few books. I started to search for books on his name because I was like, I do audio books at night to go to sleep, but I also end up getting into them a little bit. And I... I can't listen to like certain people. I'm like, this guy's this guy's voice fucking sucks. <laughs> like I wanna re- I wanna hear this book, but like, nope, you're out. Uh my guy is my guy is I think his name's Rob Brick or something like that. So just just to That's just a porn to, star. Just to know that like <laughs> this just is Rob, Rob Brick. Brick. <laughs> <laughs> you see the new Rob Brick and Adrian Chetrick scene, dude? <laughs> <laughs> uh let me let me just get my guy's name. It's uh Richard Poe, Dick Poe, <laughs> is my guy. Um, so the the general question is, what's a take that you had and then you were proven completely? I believe Key's 
vehemently disagrees with this because I actually know the clip he's talking about because Keegs like quote tweeted or posted it, and I think she was like Margot Robbie's wrong here. I believe I could be wrong. Maybe she was like Margot Robbie's right, but I think she's a Jim Dale guy. Um, so the jury's out on that. Okay. But the uh, well, speaking of Keegs, was there ever a time that I had an opinion and it was proved completely correct? <laughs> Can't think of anything. <laughs> the um, I don't know. I I right now. Oh oh oh! Al Jazeera is my best one. Al Jazeera is my best one because I said that joking, but I was kind of like, I'm not actually joking. I'm gonna say I'm joking because the internet's really mad. But I remember being like, I think there's a chance that Al Jazeera is not reliable, <laughs> and everyone was like, this is racist, and this is a bad take, and this is like. Ignorant, and then it was like Al Jazeera is funded and run by Al Qaeda. I remember being like, <laughs> "Oh, really?" I remember being like, "Oh my <laughs> <Yeah>. god!" Like <laughs> racism I thought, works. <laughs> <laughs> I was so fucking pumped. I was like, "Wait!" I was, oh, I was running victory laps all over the place. I was demanding apologies and shit. <laughs> of course, none of that's gonna happen. But I was like, Al Jazeera, who believes them? They're funded by terrorists. And everyone was like, <gasps> and then it was like uh, six months later, there was like, Al Jazeera is funded by terrorists. <laughs> it was like direct quote. I was like, holy fucking shit. <laughs> It's like the only time that's ever happened. The um, I've been wrong about everything else my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> Travis Kelsey and fucking Al Jazeera hooked me up. <laughs> the uh, what do you call it? The one I I because I just talked about it on radio too. Like, it's it's the offenses need to just run and gun every time. Did you not see like like that that Jets Patriots game? Nobody could move the ball, and then they both just started fucking around with when there was five minutes uh, left, and they had to just go, and they both scored. Everyone. If you act, it's like that. It's like teams don't act like they need points. You need points every drive. Yep. If you act like you need points, whenever you need points, teams get points. They did it in. Uh, I think we talked about this again too, though. The overtime game, week one, it was like the Jets gave up a a, a, a drive, and then their defense was back on the field right away for overtime. And Tony Rome was like, "But this is going to be totally different now because they're just throwing different defense." And it was three and out, and it was like. Oh, why didn't they do that the first time? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I don't want to football explain to people, but like, points are good. Yeah, not getting points is bad. So every drive, go get points. And I just there is, of course, I get what they're saying. Like you know, depending on field position and time on the clock, and you know you don't want any. You're playing like you know no no deep ball, all this shit. But like I really genuinely believe there is like football has become. So overanalyzed that like you let some of the best athletes just fucking go yeah. and improvise and like shit happens you know the the person to agree with me would obviously be Tom Brady um, yeah but I actually saw a clip from him he tweeted this morning his uh, his podcast and I just saw a clip from it and um, <coughs> excuse me <coughs> it's I actually think, crazy like, that, like Jim Gray and him are still doing that yeah um, I feel like that should be bigger than it is I mean, yeah I'm, I'm sure it does well but it's like. I feel like I should get a Tom Brady once a week clip where I'm like, holy shit, you know? I I think he like it's not you know he doesn't do like doesn't get promoted. I think I I think it's like I don't think he really says that many like inflammatory things like like on the the Steelers version of this podcast, Ben Roethlisberger and and Jerome Bettis were like they cheated to beat us this week. Yeah, <laughs> and, where, where they t- they talk football or they talk like life. I think it's a little bit of both. Yeah. Um. But like they cheated to beat us. This it, week. They funny. they were like they're like we we had they they knew what this sign meant and they just like. They would change their offense. I was like, that sounds like football. Yeah, that sounds like you fucking had a bad system. Right. And by the way, Bill Cowher says they didn't cheat. Bill Cowher's like, we all did that. Um, yeah. the, it's called sign stealing. It exists right. in every sport. Right. It's fucking like we're trying crazy. to figure out what you're doing. Yeah. Um, but Brady had a very interesting thing where he was talking about – he was asked how the game was changed. And I'm sure that's because – did you see that viral clip this week, like who misses early 2000s football? No, but dude, just pass, violence, check it. Just pure it's, violence, it, bro. It's it actually was like kind of uncomfortable for me. Like, yeah, because like, just cause like getting to just go to my Twitter. I probably I retweeted it probably like the other day. Uh, it's, it shouldn't be too far down. Um, but it was someone I, I retweeted my buddy who who quote tweeted it with, which I do like retweeting him sometimes because he he doesn't have like a ton of followers. But then he like. It's like, whoa. Like, I yeah, think he's got, like, yeah, a yeah. thousand likes or whatever now. Right, right Because right. he just said early 2000s football was a snuff film. <laughs> 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 and, uh, and um, but it's, like, in this clip, what the hell is this? Why is this from 2019? Yeah. I think because you're not logged in, they, like. Yeah. Um, 
I mean, I know what you're talking about, though. It's just yeah, like, it, like, gonna cross but like in this minute and a half hits, clip, and, like, like nine people go unconscious. Yeah. where it's like Jesus Christ, they're doing the arms and yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah like people, you see, <laughs> it's like like when they say that, I'm like, I do not miss that. And I really that's don't. why I, I really don't. In watching that clip, I was just kind of like Jesus Christ. I mean, yeah, we we always joke about jacked up, but like jacked up used to be like a celebration yeah. of people getting fucking. Like, oh, he's uh, not going to be able to walk with his kids one day. <laughs> oh, he can't remember his grandchildren's name. Oh, jacked up. <laughs> but the, uh, the, the, it was asked Brady how it's, it's going to change. And watch this one right here. <laughs> <laughs> he actually, wait, leave the sound on. <laughs> that was okay, that was. Jesus. Oh, I remember that one. Yep, yep. (laughs) Oh. (laughs) Oh. (laughs) Oh. (laughs) That's his own fault on that one. (laughs) Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> but <laughs> holy holy shit. <laughs> but the the so Brady was asked like how the game has changed or whatever. And um he uh, something I never even thought of. Where it's pretty interesting. Where he, he's talking about how you got to keep the physical violence in the game and how it's an important part of the game. And he was talking about like he's like when I used to play Ray Lewis, I wasn't just thinking like get a first down, get a first down. He's like, he's like when Ray Lewis hit somebody, they got hurt. Mm-hmm. So like I would have to I, in my mind, I'd be like, is this eight yards worth losing playing for three to four weeks? <laughs> and like that's a huge factor of the game. That's crazy. I, you know what's crazy is. Sometimes you made that choice. Yeah, <laughs> it's like we're getting eight yards, boys. <laughs> you know, sorry, 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 dude. Line. What are you gonna do, Wes? Yeah, right, right. <laughs> hey, like Wes Welker's at home right now, like a fucking <laughs> bowl of porridge because Tom Brady wanted those eight yards that one dime. The, that uh, is crazy. Yeah, he's like, he's like, Ray Lewis would just hurt people, and like you, like, <laughs> like can I lose this guy? Like, I was like, that's oh crazy to have to like think, like weigh all those options. Like, yeah, he really he was talking about like, war. like, like Zach Wilson doesn't have, like, isn't making all his checks. And like Brady was making all his like checks, welfare checks, and and deciding, can I lose that person? <laughs> like, crazy dude. Um, but yeah. Anyway, that's it. It's it's offenses should go no huddle every time. And if Tom Brady agrees, then I'm right. <laughs> I I just had a good. What was it? Fuck, I lost it. Uh, uh. Yeah, fuck it. Go. Looking to do something tomorrow night? Bolero is the perfect spot for a Friday night out. That is tomorrow night. I love accurate coffee whether you're celebrating a birthday feeling competitive or just want to have a good time bolero is the go-to destination for an unforgettable bowling experience with bolero's exceptional service incredible value and classic fun of bowling bolero is the place to be bold enjoy unbeatable excuse me enjoy enjoy unbeatable food enjoy unbeatable food and beverage specials while you bowl, right now they're running an exclusive offer, offer unlimited bowling on Friday nights. You can bowl to your heart's content every Friday night at Bolero. Start times will differ per location, so make sure you check the nearest location to take advantage of this amazing offer. Bowling actually is one of those things. Every time I do it, I'm like, this is so much goddamn fun. Uh, visit Bolero.com to find your nearest Bolero location to take advantage of the offers and experience the thrill of unlimited bowling on Friday nights. Thanks, Bolero. How's it going, everybody? Uh, question for you. What's something that should be easy, but you're really bad at? Mm. My example is uh, plugging things in. Uh, every time I, I go to plug something in, I, I line it up and I just miss. I get uh, that a example, lot, too. For example, an HDMI cord, the back of a TV, that's my absolute yep. nightmare. I'm gonna, that's I'm a bad one, too. Every single time trying to plug that thing in, yep. I'm going to start cramping up. It's going to get in my head, and that thing is not going to be plugged in. Yo. Also, super bad at opening bags that have those little dotted lines to rip. I will destroy that bag every time. So what's something that is supposed <laughs> to be super simple that you are just incapable of doing? The, uh, maybe the, the because, plug, uh, the USB is, is the, the trope. Yeah. HDMI I have trouble with. Um, the, the 
USB C, like the other US, like the universal one, is is very hard for me to. I don't know which way to go. And then also like old school plugs that are like one is a little wider than the other one. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah. I always I look at it. I'm like, okay, it's this way, and I always get that wrong. I'm with you on plugging in. I'm also with, with you with you on the the peeling the peely opens the ones that have the flap that peel. The cir- what? like circular, like you're opening up a, a bottle of water or whatever it has. Oh a, yeah, and yeah, it, has, yeah. it says peel here, and you just end up ripping that plastic thing <laughs> yeah. off, and it never opens. That one's bullshit. Um, I, I I'm 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 not great at plugging things in, but that's because I'm scared. Um, <laughs> I I, I always I always see the blue pl- that blue light flash, and mm. I'm like, the next one's gonna get me. Um, I mean, I'm 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 really bad at checking my email. I'm really bad at keeping up with my calendar i'm really bad at rsvping to things those are just on account of depression and <laughs> non-confrontational issues and self-esteem and stuff but um as far as physically stuff i can't do oh i know this isn't really like something i'm bad at it's something i think we're all bad at and i wonder if we can just admit it or maybe i'm bad at it and you guys are going to tell me something different right now hit me how do you wash your back like I don't think I've ever washed my back. I don't think I. I mean, I do like my shoulder. Like I don't top even shoulders. Do that. You don't do your shoulders? Nope. Oh, you should probably do that. Well, I get. I go like I go here. I can't get over. Oh yeah, because you're like a fucking meathead. You can't, but like, you but like that. In the, even like when, even like if I'm not in shape, like I, I can't. Like how do I get my back? There's a. I mean, I think if you if you're talking about really scrubbing your back, people have like the fucking brush that they use it. I just don't do that. So like so like we're just all. Going around every day, dirty, dirty backs. backs. I mean, this is probably something that like black people will make fun of us for, and they're like, "Oh, white people have disgusting backs." But like, I just don't think it's a, a thing that needs to get like scrubbed. Like, I think I. Well, I, I, I'd I, argue I, I rub my, my my shoulders, and I have like shampoo, and then I think like my back will just get clean by water. But I'd argue water your back is the sweatiest part of your body. But I think sweat will get what like I don't think you need to scrub away sweat. I think hot water and like dripping soap will get rid of sweat. But so where's all the dead skin happen? Where's all the dead skin go? How does it get off? I don't know about dead skin. I don't really think about dead skin when I'm washing my body. I think about That's it more as like you're sweat. You're mostly getting off. That's what stinks. Well, really? Like lower back. Huh? You could do like lower back. Yeah, but like I I can get I'll get I I can get here like like this is as far as I go here, and then I can get right here, and like I can't. So like from like my I could, shoulders, I can do it. I just don't. Like I mean, you can. Wow, yeah, you're flexible. Yeah, like I can, I can grab, I can grab my hands. Like, so like, how often are you like getting? Your, like how often are you? I can't do that. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, I, I'll do the shoulders and let it drip down, kind of like my legs. I was gonna say I don't even wash my legs. You don't worry about my back. <laughs> Fuck Jackie. I, I do like, like, kind of what Kevin was just showing. Like I do. I, there's no fucking whatever. I do top and then back there and then. So like most of our backs aren't getting washed. Yeah. So I'm. I mean, like, if I need, like if I right. needed to like, scrub no my back, I could. Back. I just don't. Yeah. So we're all. I don't think you physically could. I think you're like. I I can't. I can't. Wide. I yeah. can't get my back. Yeah. But like, I mean, I can get my lower back. But like, I, I could get like my shoulder up here. But like, I. But that's not like that's that's a twenty four seven. That's three sixty five. I'm not doing that. So like, I had a feeling everyone was gonna be kind in my boat. But so like, we're all sitting here all day, on our backs. Getting the most, I get more sweat on my back than I do on my stomach, on my legs, and then we just. I mean, let I, some water run down. Yeah, but I, I, I also think this is why water pressure matters. But like, I, I let water like blast my back. So I get a fucking rain. Get a shitty thing. Yeah, yeah. I got like a strong one that probably does more. I, I could probably shower in my shower without soap and get like a good. I mean, it's just like I, I get power washed like a horse. <laughs> it's, it's a, it's a shower head from. Probably like the 1940s, <laughs> and it's. I think it's also broken, and it's just, <laughs> and it's like it hits your nipples at the tip of your dick. It's like ah. So I think I'm literally getting power washed. Like paint chips are flying off of me. So I think I'm good, but I do think you're right that we're not. But you know, they. I think, they, I think they, I'm gonna get a loofah. I think I'm gonna do it. It's not even a loofah. They they make like a stick. Yeah. With a, it's like a, a giant toothbrush. Imagine and people just. <laughs> I think I'm gonna get one of those. I'm gonna clean my back for the first time in probably 15, 20 years. We should we should do like a black light thing on your on your back before you do it. See your dead skin. It's it's got to be like it's I gotta be an animal. Let's let's Google it real quick though, because it might be something like your back skin is different or something like that. You know what I mean? Like I I'm gonna guess Google's like you're an animal. <laughs> you, how your back skin do is the you same. wash your back? 
Go over your back with a natural bristle body brush before you shower. The brush will fold you. Reach around your back, scrub the brush. Three ways to clean your back. How do I properly wash my back? If you're not flexible, try body body oil. That sounds gross. How do you wash your back when you can't reach? reach? Use a back brush. Yeah, it's not saying don't clean your back. What happens if I never scrub my back? Yeah, that's what we're looking for. An unscrubbed back is not a fatal condition. Well, I didn't say we're going to die. <laughs> so you don't have to soap it up every time you step in the shower, but don't take that as an open invitation to never wash it. Like every other body part, your back can benefit from some lather every now and again. Our skin's outermost layer, the epidermis, naturally sheds dead cells. The simple friction of our clothes rubbing against us also helps shed dead skin. However, some of it will remain in place if it's not scrubbed off. If you're looking for an easy way to scrub off the last few dead cells, they recommend the two-in-one feature of an exfoliating bath towel, like the Japanese blah, 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 blah. Um, that's probably actually the most answer right there. You probably get – your skin gets like soft and shit from the hot water. And then when you dry your back off with your towel, you yeah. probably rub it off there. That's probably really what happens. This shit is like get a – it's like a chamois for your car. <laughs> Sham wow over here. Go back to that other article. Yeah. What's the worst that can happen if you leave a few dead skins laying on your back? The most likely consequence will be a dull complexion. Again, that won't kill you. Can lead to back acne. Lone is back acne. Yeah, you probably got pimples on that back, bro. I, I got some pimples, and also like my back is is like it definitely is my worst skin. Like I, I see pictures of me from the back, like in the summer, and I'm like, whose back is that? Yeah, it's gross. That, <laughs> backs like, are gross. That doesn't Airy look, backs. Like, it shit, doesn't make it doesn't it doesn't jive with the rest the rest of, me. of your like, body. Yeah. I, like I just got like I have a fat back. <laughs> like like my, my back's really fat. You have a fat back? Yeah. I feel like you would have a muscular back. It's I I work out my back a lot, but like when I see a picture, I'm like, that's not. Do you have like like, like uh, rolls, kind of like love handles, and like no, like there? What do you mean? What, what do you mean fat then? I guess it just doesn't look like what I want it to look. Okay, like. I think it's I think it's it's a, I'm, it's a I'm dull. I'm pretty I, sure your back is probably completely fine. You have body dysmorphia. <laughs> it's a dull complexion. I'm like I'm, I'm like you a, just said that because that said that. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, you, yeah. We, <laughs> <laughs> you would never have said that. It wasn't for that. Yeah, no, but but when I saw, it, I went, "That's the issue." There it is, the, bang. The the dull it's complexion. A, a, my skin on my back is a dull complexion and an inferior. So I'm getting a back scrubber. Dude, I I, I, I have a confession to make, and it's funny because I think this this I think this will play out at one of our live shows. There's a guy on Instagram that I DM with. I talk to this dude, Zach. More than anybody in my life. You're a psychopath. And all we do is send pimple videos. Oh, God. You're Bro, crazier than I thought. John, like, I, I'm telling you, this is a random stranger I've never met in my life. <laughs> Look how long it's still going. This is insane. Bro, day, noon, and night. If we, we send shit to each other, it's still going. <laughs> what the what? fuck? It's dude. insane. It's the craziest thing about me. And I was actually going to wait till the live show because I think he's coming. And I was going to, we're, we're going to do it now. Still going, by the way. I'm watching with this. With I'm telling you, I disgust. talk to him more than anybody in my life. He's actually a very funny dude. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got a crush on Zach, but like, oh my like God. I think I think one time I posted the pimple shit, and he was like, "Oh, like I've got like we, you know, it's like I I don't like this. I don't like that. I like this about myself. I just, <laughs> yeah. but I it's like I watch it at night. It like calms me down." And then, uh, oh. and so he will just I'll just be like, "Yo, check this one out." And he's like, "Check this one out." And I told I was like, you should start an account, bro, because his captions about these fucking disgusting animals is very, very funny. But I'm like, I got to a, the point the other day where I was like, I talked to this dude, Zach, more than anybody I know. <laughs> and you want to hear the most embarrassing thing? There was one time another Zach DM'd me. And then this dude changed his profile picture. I don't like look at his profile. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. But I sent a slew <laughs> to the wrong guy <laughs> and and that weirdo just rolled with it <laughs> and i said oh my god i meant to send those to someone else why didn't you say something <laughs> and he was like yeah man like so i just i don't know I, 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 I think he sent something like that he was into like back to me and i was like that was weird. <laughs> and I was like, like I, somehow I was like, you're the weirdo. I said, I, I, I unknowingly pimple bombed this guy and ended up walking out of the conversation going, what a weirdo. <laughs> but that, I mean, that guy, Zach, I talked to more than fucking anybody in the world. 
It's fucking crazy. <laughs> that is that's an issue, Kevin. Last night yeah. I sent him. I said, "Are you onto sheep shearing yet? You ever oh watch a sheep God. get sheared? You ever watch this? Look at this. It's amazing." They cut all of the fur off in one in like one big thing. It's amazing. Yeah, I actually have seen that. That's pretty cool. That's satisfying. Anyway, <laughs> so I think that's a, that guy's gonna be on the live show. <laughs> I might have to like, we'll, maybe we'll put up on the big screen how many fucking times we DM. Like, you're gonna have those to gamer buddies meet. <laughs> yeah, it's like that. It's like that. But anyway, the, I don't know why. I, the reason I originally brought this up is, um, like, the people who who like those videos, like we're all sick yeah. you know and and he sent me a, a dm the other day and he's like we're all the same and uh it said on instagram liked by and it was zach bryan <laughs> and i was like the thought it was like even this fucking monster country superstar is just probably sitting in bed the same way going come on get it out get it out oh god i mean we, we we analyze them like they're sports like 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 a clip where it's like, how did you blow it there? You had the chance to get it all out in one oh, shot, and you fucked it up. And blah, blah, blah. I just started also getting into it, and I feel like John, how like you when you were watching that movie, basically, like at first I watched it, I was like, oh fuck, I don't like how much I like that. <laughs> Yo, Jackie, I will put you on. The, <laughs> the group chat. Listen, if you if you if you think you're into any of that, the first time that you see in some inside of someone's ear, yeah. And there's four different Blackheads? holes, and you realize it's all one big one underneath. And they dig into one hole, and they pull it out, and it leaves four empty holes. It's sick. Oh my God. God. It's it looks like a bruise, and it's like, oh look, there's four blackheads, and it's like, no, that's one blackhead. I think I know with what four pores. Yes, there's and there's a couple yeah. that that go around like very frequently because yeah, all the yeah, accounts yeah. post them. Oh my god! And it's and they enough. and the yeah. Japanese people, they're so good at this because they have oily skin. They they like they're like they're, they 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 like needle it and then they just go. And they, they pull out with the tweezers, bro. They pull out yeah. like it's like a ear, like a, a pore in your ear, like this big, like microscopic, and they pull out like it's crazy <laughs> it's so sick sometimes i'm like i wish i had bad skin so i could like do it to myself Ugh. like i look in the mirror i'm like oh do i have any i could pop i just don't have that kind of skin that I'm was like, a oh. uh invention of mine as a kid i wanted to invent an acne popping face that, you, that, that exists yeah that yeah exists. no i know i it, literally it was my idea i yeah I, I, I got it it doesn't it doesn't it's like this is not the real thing i wanted because like, like i, I, I it's like, like popping on myself and I was like, I like this, but I'd rather take the suicide medication and make it stop. <laughs> and and uh, and I was like, but I still want to do that. And I was like, I should invent. I was like, I was probably like in like sophomore high school. I should invent like a little mask I can put on and still do it. Yeah, that's a great idea. This one's just a square, and you pull, you pump the goo, goo into it. Yeah, I mean, you got it. I got it. Somebody said it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the the question every time, me and me and my boy Zach, we just like there's just they'll just be old people with like. Just all over their face, and they just take one of those like devices, and they just rub it across, and they all pop at once. And it's like, how do you let it get that bad? <laughs> like, oh, I have one. Uh, okay, I have two. I have three. And all of a sudden, your your skin is black because it's it's gross. Anyway, <laughs> what you guys want to talk about? <laughs> we talked about seventeen thousand dead babies, and it wasn't the most uncomfortable part of the show. <laughs> One more voicemail? <laughs> or, or are we done? Yeah, one more. Clean, clean the palate. We did uh, this, didn't the we? Town home, me and my girlfriend yes. or our yeah. dog. Yeah. Sorry, we'll just end on the other one because I have to be so bad. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I've got a podcast about cheating. Oh, yeah? Called Cheaties. Cheaties? People call in and tell us their cheating stories. I do it with another comedian, Lace Larrabee. What was your basis for starting that? Do you have a good one where you were the Yeah, I do. You... So well, who, who were you cheating on? I I was. Were you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that was that was the that was the original original story. I it it all the catalyst was I was dating a comic and he cheated on me and um I called this other comic in the Atlanta comedy scene who had a bit about cheating on and uh, we started this podcast. But my original one I've talked about this online before, but um I was dating a guy in high school and I cheated on him and we like. I think maybe we were on a break. What I went out of town for a Christmas vacation, and he ended up uh, hooking up with this girl who would come back. She moved out of town from Louisville, right? She went to um, New York to become a model, and she would come back in the holidays to hang out with her cousin, mm, who was our fucked. friend, right? <laughs> so he, he hooked up with Carrie's cousin that night, right? And uh, And then 
we got back together because I was like, oh, we're even now. You hooked up with Carrie's cousin. <laughs> I cheated on you. We we both kissy kissy. It's all good. And uh, and then that Carrie's cousin ended up becoming. No. Yes. No. <laughs> yes. And I I'm like working on a bit on stage about it because. She, yep, that's, that's, like, that's the day story. after he admitted that he hooked up with her, the next day, because she used to be just a girl that was, like, it would come to parties on with Carrie over the summer or on Christmas break or whatever. And she was, I, I think I probably interacted with her one time, but she, I just remember her being like, oh, that's a, she that was bitch. like, I'm a girl amongst the <laughs> high school parties, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, but the next day after he admitted that he had hooked up with her, there was a write up in the newspaper about how she was in a TV show. And I was like, I was weirdly like that kid that I always wanted to be in theater, but I didn't want to admit it. Yeah, you know, yeah, I was yeah. like, no, I'm cool. I don't want to be like one of those gay. nerds. Yeah. 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 And I was like, fuck, she's, like, <laughs> she's like doing everything I wanted to. And she's like, you know. But wait, so, but she didn't like blow up until. Like that was high school. That was a long time ago. Yes, like, I and remember. She had blow up till like later twenties, or no, was she like a child star? Too? No, she wasn't a child star. Right, she so you didn't um, know for a little while. She so she was like in a in a TV show, right? And then, uh, then she was this. I really was kind of obsessed. Like I'm not. This is it was weird of me. I know she, You're a but girl. I remember. You're I know. Still a girl. I know. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't care. <laughs> I would do this because I would go. I would go to my other like friends in high school, and I'd be like, "Do you recognize this girl?" Because I would be like, "If my friends start recognizing your name, that means she's becoming famous." Yeah. All right, big thanks for watching. If you made it through this whole episode, that means you should be subscribed. There's so many of you out there who watch and don't subscribe, so make sure you are a KFC Radio subscriber. Make sure you get all the content when it drops. Click that button now. I have nine fingers. I'm still subscribed. It's that easy.